What's up everyone, it's your friendly neighborhood French Canadian and today I'm going to show you a Sub-Zero build. So this is going to be like a Cryomancer warrior type of build. We're going to use a mix of melee attacks as well as range attacks with sorceries. I got this idea to make builds based off on characters we know and love and I thought it was fitting because I used to make Mortal Kombat videos and I already wanted to make sort of a frost build. So I figured that this would be awesome. And Sub-Zero is probably one of the most known characters, even if you don't know Mortal Kombat at all. He's one of the most popular ninjas. Lin Kuei are not ninjas. Let's get something straight. I am not a ninja. We're just gonna pretend he didn't say that. So first I'll explain to you how this build works, how all the spells and the ashes of war work, and then I'll go through all of the items you're going to need, and I'm going to show you the locations of them so you can find them easily. So as I mentioned in my intro, this is a Cryomancer build which will use both sorceries and melee attacks, but as you'll see in these fights, I'm using mostly my sorceries for this. Because I made this build based around the Cryomancer Sub-Zero from the Link Wei clan in Mortal Kombat, and we're gonna use only ice sorceries and ice ashes of war, and the affinity on our weapon is also going to be cold. So the entire idea behind this build is to be able to get frostbite proc extremely quickly and we'll do that first and foremost with the freezing mist sorcery. Now this is really great because you can charge it up so it lasts longer and basically the entire time that the enemies are standing in there they will get uh, frostbite proc extremely quickly and frostbite works exactly like blood loss so once the frostbite bar is completely filled up it'll take an entire chunk out of their health uh, depending on their total hp pool so you want to go into a fight and use the mist right away and if you want to keep away enemies then you're going to use the horror frost stomp ash of war that is on your main hand weapon and that's really good not only for building frostbite, but for keeping them away because it does staggers when all the ice crystals explode on the second hit. And for more range damage, we have the Adula Frostblade, and we also have the Ice Crag Projectile. So both of those are going to give us some long range attacks, and then the rest is really going to be up close and personal. And we also have Zammer Ice Storm, which also can be charged. And basically, the character will put the staff in the ground and it'll create a ice storm around them. So enemies caught within it or around it will continuously get hit. So it's an AoE type of thing. You want to use it when there's a lot of enemies. And again, it will increase the frostbite bar and can cause frostbite. I really love the Adula Blade because even if you're out of range to hit them with the actual blade, it sends a projectile, kind of like the Dark Moon Blade. So it's really good, but keep in mind that the initial blade hit does a crap ton more damage than the actual projectile. So you really want to stay up right on enemies with this, but you also have the option to fight a bit far away if you're like healing up or uh, replenishing your FP or anything like that. But I think it's a really, really fun build. As I mentioned, I wanted to make a straight Cryomancer warrior build, but it was way too boring. Like, in my opinion, if I find a build boring, I'm not going to make a video about it and say, hey, try this out, you know, like, I literally will not sleep at night if I tell you guys to do something that's boring. <laughs> because if I get bored of a build by just trying it out and testing it out, then obviously you guys probably won't have much fun with it. But I'm having a ton of fun with this one, like, just having the blade spell, which is super sub-zero, like, because he creates sword and axes attacks with ice, so it works so well. And it does make you feel like you are playing a Lin Kuei Cryomancer. For the weapons for this build, I chose the Uchi Katana and the Carrion Regal Scepter. Because we're going to need a staff to cast sorceries. Now you can use any staff, I only use this because that's the one I had upgraded. And I chose the Uchi Katana because, well, as we know, he's a ninja or not ninja. But the awesome thing about using a katana for a frost build is that not only will you get a ton of frost buildup, so right now I have 105, but I also have blood loss buildup. So on larger enemies, you actually have a chance to proc not only frostbite, but blood loss as well. And do keep in mind that the more you level up your weapon, the higher those numbers will be. So my weapon is uh, fully upgraded, so that's why I have 105. Uh, the Uchi Katana is located very early on in Limgrave. It's in the Death Touch Catacombs. So you can use the Saint's Bridge 
side of grace or anywhere around here like it's really close to the starting area so all you need to do is make your way to the gate front and then take a right here and you'll find the dead touch catacombs now for the regal scepter you get that from uh, defeating renala in uh, lucaria manor so basically uh, you have to use her remembrance and spend it to get her staff now if you've already spent her remembrance you can go at a um, walking bell mausoleum and you can duplicate her remembrance even if you spent it already even if you don't have it in your inventory you can still make a duplicate of her remembrance and get the staff so that is actually really handy now for the ash of war we'll be using horfrost stomp on our katana because it's a very very sub-zero move I mean, he doesn't exactly do that in the game, but he does ice the ground to make people slip. He ices the ground to make them stick in place and all of that good stuff. So I think it just fit the character really well. And once you put that on your sword, you want to use the cold affinity. So our frost buildup will be higher. Now, alternatively, if you want to make this an intellect and dex build, you could make uh, your katana keen instead of cold, which means it'll scale better with dexterity. And you could use a sorcery like a Freeze Armament, which buffs the sword with the frost damage. So that's another option that you have for this build. But Frozen Armament is definitely something that would fit with this build and with the character of Sub-Zero. And now I'll show you where to get this Ash of War or Frost Stomp. Basically, it's in a Carrier Manor or outside of it. You can take the Caria Manor main gate side of Grace or Road to the Manor, anything you have. Basically, it's located right in this little lake area and you can go from here but you can't go from down here because it's a cliff and you can't uh, get up here so you really have to go from this area now my flask distribution is usually like this when i play any sort of sorcerer build you know, four flasks for um, FP and nine flasks for health. Because a lot of the spells we're going to use don't take a lot of FP, except the big one we're going to use for bosses. Now for the Wondrous Physic, you can use the Magic Shrouding Crack tier, which boosts your magic attacks. Or you can use the Cerulean Hidden tier, which eliminates all FP consumption for a time. So like you can spam your big spells on a boss until this wears off without consuming any FP. So it's super useful when you actually run out of FP flasks. Now for our ice spells, we're going to be using Zammer Ice Storm, Glinstone Ice Crag, Freezing Mist, which is also a Nash of War, and I considered putting it on our katana in our main hand, but I just think that because we can use this as a spell and we can then have our Frost Stomp on our sword, it's way better. And our big spell is going to be Abdullah's Moonblade. So it's really not FP heavy, so you don't need a lot of FP and you can fight really long. That's why I only had four FP flasks for this build. So to get the Glenstone Ice Rag and Freezing Mist, you need to get them from Celevis. He will be selling them. So you need to either complete his quest line, do all the creepy things he wants you to do with his dolls, or you can actually wait at the end of Ronnie's quest line, complete her quest line, and then when you go back to the Three Sisters to his rise, which is located right here, um, he'll be dead. So my assumption is that either Blade or Ronnie found out and then killed him, and you'll be able to loot his body and get his bell. Once you get his bell, you come back to Round Table Hold, give it to these lovely ladies here, and then you can go to his quote-unquote store and you can buy both of these spells. For Abdullah's Moonblade, you need to come to the Moonlight Altar. And you can only get there uh, once you progress far enough in Ronnie's questline. It's like literally the very, very last part of it. So once you come here, you'll see this um, church that is all broken down. And the only thing you need to do is make your way towards it because that's where you need to go for the quest anyways. And there will be a Glinstone Dragon that you need to fight here. Now, this is the same dragon that disappears once you fight him. Uh, the first time at the three sisters like after you get him to like three quarter health i think or something like that he he moves away and basically he comes right here so you face him at the very end of this quest when to beat him uh, you will have abdullah's moonblade or adula's moonblade sorry i don't know why i said abdullah <laughs> now for the last spell zammer ice storm we can get this in the mountaintops of the giants in the zammer runes and i'll show you exactly where to get it 
But people sometimes confuse this because there is an Ash of War that is called Zammer Ice Storm. But you actually cannot get this Ash of War. It's only default on a weapon, the Zammer Curved Greatsword. And I tried to make uh, this build with that sword, but I absolutely hate it. And I could not, in good conscience, like tell you guys, oh yeah, use this sword for this build just because of the, this Ash of War, when the R1 sucks balls, like literally, it is so freaking slow. And it's just an ugly sword in my opinion. So I decided that we were gonna use sorceries, that we were gonna use the Zammer Ice Storm spell instead of the Ash of War, and that it's better to use a katana anyways because they're cooler, they're prettier, and there's blood loss, so there's that. And it fits our non-ninja ninja. So in the mountain tops of the giants, Zammer Runes is actually gonna be like the first area you come to once you get off the, the lift. So you want to go to the Zammer Runes Side of Grace, and we're going to go in this area right here. So follow me, once you teleport here, you want to go straight for the runes, right here. And you'll be able to loot this off a body, so it's not too complicated. Sorry, my cat wanted some attention and jumped on the table. <laughs> So you'll find it on this body right here. There's also enemies around, but yeah, it'll be like right here. Now that we have most of the things we need, let's look at the talismans we're going to use. So I chose the Shard of Alexander to boost the damage on Horfrost Stomp. We're going to be using a Carrion Filigree Crest to lower the FP consumed by Horfrost Stomp. We're going to be using a Graven Mass Talisman to raise the damage on our sorceries. And we'll be also using the Old Lord's Talisman to extend spell effect duration. So this will affect spells like Zammer Ice Storm, so it'll stay longer, as well as the Freezing Mist. For the Old Lord's Talisman, you want to go to the Crumbling Ephraim. You want to take the Great Bridge Side of Grace, and then instead of going to Malekith, you want to go the other way around and you'll easily find this area but if you're unsure i made an entire video and showed exactly where to get this so i'll put it on a on a card or whatever so you guys can go click on it and watch the entire uh, walkthrough from there for the graven mass talisman and this one is in the halig tree area so it's in the consecrated snow field uh, you need the two halig tree medallions to open it then you can use the grand lift of rolled select secret medallion and you'll be teleported right here. Now to find this talisman you need to go to the Albineric Rise in the consecrated snowfield. You can solve the little puzzle there and you'll be able to loot this talisman from the tower. All you need is to get the fanged imp ashes. You summon them and you have to fight the imp that is there with that summon. So as long as your summon can hit that enemy imp a couple times, you'll be fine, you can just kill him after, and the puzzle will be solved, so it's really easy. Now the Garion Filigreed Crest, I feel like I've used this thing in like 25 a million builds, but you find this on the road to the manor, there will be a War Counselor EG right here, and he'll sell this crest to you once you start Blades or Ronnie's quest lines. Now for the Shard of Alexander, I'll show you the exact location. But it is in the Crumbling Ferrum, and you have to have advanced Alexander's questline. Or, I noticed, with this character specifically, I hadn't talked to him even once, even after the Radon fight. And now I completed the entire game, and I actually found him at the last location he's in. So if you're wondering where he is, and you never really advanced his questline, never talked to him, but you finished the game, he should be in the last area, which is the Crumbling Ferrum. If not, then you have to go through all the other areas to see where he is, which is kind of a bother, but just know that if you finish the game, he will be where I showed you. So basically, you want to find the Dragon Temple Lift. So to get the Shard of Alexander, you actually need to kill the Godskin Duo, and once you do, you have the Dragon Temple Altar Side of Grace. So I'll show you where to go from here.
Now this is where he will be standing. You talk to him, you have to defeat him in battle, and then he'll give you the shard. Now if you're not finished the game, there will be a dragon here that you need to fight. But I think that if Alexander is there, the dragon won't be, so we have to like believe that he fought the dragon off. Because I've come here before and I hadn't advanced this questline and there was a dragon there. Now when I did advance this questline, there was no dragon. So I'm pretty sure that's how it works, but I'm not 100% certain. Now for the build stats, at level 140 I have 40 vigor, 30 mind, 25 endurance and a 67 intelligence. Now previously I made this build to use with the Xamar Greatsword as I mentioned before so I had like 16 strength and 18 dex but you really don't need that it really depends on the weapon you choose to use so I feel like you should pump all those points into intelligence. So the best class to start with would be something like an astrologer or any class that has high intelligence to start. But I did this with my Confessor character, so it wasn't too bad. And I'm making this an intelligence build only because magic and frost and anything ice related scales with intelligence. And because, you know, this is supposed to really focus on Sub-Zero and his ice magic as a cryomancer, I felt like I didn't want to make a dex and intelligence build because of that. So that should be everything, guys. Let me know if you've made a build like this before and what you think of my Sub-Zero build. Now, if you have any suggestions for more characters, whether it be from anime, movies, whatever, like I have a Google Doc full of characters that I want to do builds for. So if you want to add to that, go ahead. I'm really interested in hearing what you guys would want to see. So I really hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Have yourself a wonderful day, and I'll see you all very soon.